Hi everyone, welcome back to Canary Cast. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. You join us after Norwich 1, Coventry 1. It's literally just finished. We've jumped straight on Skype to dissect it. Jacob, I'm feeling a bit disappointed after that. I don't know about you. Yeah, it would have been such a, a different video, wouldn't it, if we'd won one nil. We'd been really, we're been still praised because you know what? It's a, it's a really good performance considering this is actually our seaside. Yeah. I think it's probably just about deserved for Coventry. They had a couple of chances. Second half, they had the more impetus. I thought we were unfortunate with a couple of opportunities. You know, Martin probably should score. Yeah. And yeah, it was, it was just nearly there. I think if you have Timu Puki today, you win that game. Yeah, agreed. And Emmy Wendia and everyone else that we're missing. What is it, like 13 <laughs> and the 45 now? other people yeah. we don't have currently yeah. fit. <laughs> and all the under-23s are injured as well. Brilliant. Anyway, <laughs> right, let's start what we always do with the team. Um, the headline really was Stiefman up top. Um, I think maybe Poheta aside, he was the most likely candidate, agreed? Yeah, it is a bit of a shame. Marco's better with the play in front of him, isn't he? Yes, uh, I think, like you said, yeah. Josh Martin or Plajeta, just for pace and kind of splitting the defence a little bit more. I thought Marco played fine. It's not his position at all, is it? Um, I'd quite like to have seen Amatoye come on, just for yeah, a little bit of a difference. Mm -hmm. He has got pace in behind. And just, you know, a bit of rawness. Why not? Unknown well, quantity, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. It's but yeah. obviously, Daniel Farker thinks he's not ready yet. So, it's the way it is. And he has been carrying not, to be fair. So, probably... Yeah. Probably not too wise to get someone else yeah. injured. <laughs> yeah, I think Marco done just about enough. He done what was asked of him, and it wasn't too bad. Um, Poheta in for Emmy, that was expected. Uh, Francic in for Puki in the ten, and then obviously McGovern starts ahead of Tim Krull. Just a quick word on McGovern today, Jacob. What do you make of him? Fine, fine, fine. <laughs> That's about yeah. it. Um, fourth, fourth appearance in three and a half years. So he's not expected to play. He does okay. I, I, <laughs> I would have liked to, we, we said in the transfer window, I would like to have seen a, a backup, but that position so unique. I, I, I never personally expected Tim McCall to play all 46 games. It's a shame he's out for at least three weeks. Hopefully he comes back quicker, but um, uh, he, was, he was fine. Yeah, he was fine. Um, the game itself, pretty quiet start. Norwich had plenty of the ball. Coventry seemed happy to allow us to do that. Um, we didn't do a great deal with it, though. It was a lot of sideways passes in the midfield, um, keeping possession, Lovely, but we just weren't really converting it into that many chances. Uh, I, 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 I kind of expected that, though. The, the match kind of went exactly probably as we thought because there's no real focal point up front. There's no. no one to really try and find and try and find those piercing passes. There was, a couple, there was one time where Stiefman had a great chance. I think it was uh, Master with a lovely ball over the top. Should score. Um, if Again, if Timu Puki's there, it's 1-0. It's, it's absolutely no question about it. But it always felt like it was going to come from a set piece or, well, lucky enough, a penalty. It just didn't think, I didn't think we could have altered it up a little bit more, you know, try and get Plehetra and Martin in behind the defenders. Well, if Stiefman's not on the last shoulder, someone needs to be, don't they? And it's, it's them too. So. And, it's, and the problem is it was all in front of Coventry, wasn't it? And yeah. I, I know I know we have 13 injuries. That's, that's clear to say that that's your main caveat. But mm. you've got to, in the best way, try and adjust. And again, that's a problem with Fark ball. We've always said it. It will, it will just never it will never change so yeah. that's the only unfortunate but everyone's fit if everyone's fit in this in this squad we win the league but at the minute it's, it's just a, it's a grind isn't it unfortunately it is and I mean it's not like the, the defence and midfield are recognisable they're not that far from where we finished the last match but in fact they're exactly the same at the start of the game but it was just that front four that looked disjointed and it's completely understandable in fairness you've got Martin who's got next to no experience at this level Poheta too Steedman isn't a striker, and then Branchage isn't really a 10. No, yeah, he's spot on in every regard. I thought they all played fine. They played as well as they could have done. They, not, none of them were, it's not for a lack of effort that we haven't scored another goal today. It's just the impetus just didn't look there. It, it seemed like as soon as we went 1-0 up after the kind of the chances just beforehand and then a couple yeah. of bits afterwards, it just felt like we're going to try and hold this now. And that's, that's what the whole second half felt like, which was so disappointing, I guess, if you have even one or two players to bring on from the bench coming back from injury, whatever, then that changes the kind of dynamics. But And and with Emi Buendia, he dictates that. He would have made sure that that game would not have... But then you could argue that's his fault today for not being in the squad, you know? Silly red cards, yeah. some, some of them. Yeah. And it is just an Emi... That is what you get with Emi sometimes. But with, with what we've got, it's a good draw. I, I said before yeah. the game, I'd have taken a draw, not negatively... But you look at the squad, it's a C team, 13 players out, and we're still top. Yeah, desperate times. You mentioned ch uh, chances we created there. There wasn't that many of them, but let's talk about them. Um, Stiefman first, because he went through one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. 
I think he was looking to lift it over um, Wilson in goal, but he he didn't really do that, did he? He went straight at his midriff. Yeah, it's just a bit of a meh finish, isn't it? You just need yeah. either, yeah, like you say, lob it and really lob it or smash it with a bit of conviction. Yeah, under which through Mark his legs. Yeah. does quite a lot. He did it against Swansea. Lovely ball into the corner. Not most, of, most of the time, he does stick it wide. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, it's, it's this point one. He should score, really. It was a good chance, but not as good as Josh Martins, who I think we're going to have to categorise that as a sitter, mate. It was a bit like Poetta's against Swansea. It's a big chance, isn't it? I'm not going to say yeah. sitter simply because he's only a young lad. He's stick, only... it, stick it either side, not the keeper. And, and I don't like those side foot finishes there. I like a bit you of a lever. To smash it. Get it through the laces. And I know, I know you could easily scuff it and it goes massively over. But for me, yeah, unless you're Timo Puki and you know you can get it into that far corner, which he does do nine times out of ten when on form, I feel like you've just got to hit that with power, like you say. It gives the keeper absolutely no chance. Even yeah. if a defender blocks it, it hits an arm. You could get a pen, for example. Yeah, it just felt like a bit of a... Mm, it, should have, it should have got in. And he'll be thinking the same after the game. I would have thought so. Um, Norwich eventually get a penalty. Poheta wins it. His pace gets him in behind the defence. Keep what a ball. ball. Yeah, what a pass Coutinho. Very bad. <laughs> it was literally Brilliant. like Pirlo. It was such a good pass yeah. over the top of the defence. I can't remember the last time in eight years he's ever played a pass like that. I know he scored numerous worldies where you're like, bloody hell, but he does keep surprising you. And to be fair to him, two games in four days when you need him the most, Alex Tete is there. And it's mm-hmm. absolutely fair, fair play to him. I know sometimes on the ball he's not the best. And all the, but you cannot criticise that man. He loves this club and has given everything. You know, Lucas Rupp's played really well with Ollie Skip. Obviously got into that knock. I thought he was brilliant against Stoke Tete. Obviously, key part for the um, third goal, wins the ball back. And obviously, today helps win the penalty. So, really, really fair play to him. He was man of the match, in my opinion. Yeah, he was superb. Um, Vrancic takes the penalty, sticks it down the middle. Keeper goes the wrong way. Lovely job. Norwich are 1-0 up. And I remember saying to you before the game even kicked off today, Jacob, let's get a goal in the first half an hour, calm the nerves, let everyone know that we have got enough about us to beat this Coventry side at home. Um, it, was a, it was a good start, a slow start, but it was a good start. We were 1-0 up and you think, right, come on then, keep a clean sheet, go and grab a second goal and we'll have this easy. It didn't look like Coventry were going to cause us too much trouble at that point. Yeah, I think obviously getting to half time 1 0, brilliant. I just felt like at that stage, it's kind of been told to say, we're going to sit on this, boys. We're going to try and keep this at 1 0, you know. And probably tiredness plays into it. They're all knackered. They must all be knackered because how the hell Grant Hanley's still fit, I do not know. Fingers crossed he's played well as well. He played very well as well. I feel like him and Ben Gibson were solid again, and they are a very good partnership there. And just felt like, yeah, try and pin Coventry back a little bit. I think as the more the game went on, obviously they, they were able to make five subs, which is yeah. <laughs> a wonderful Massive opportunity. Massive advantage. Yeah. And you just think those fresh legs, it just gave them that little bit more of an impetus to go on. And they hit the post, didn't they? You think, oh, we've got away with it again. We're going to get a one nil. And just at the end, this it's a screen because you think yeah. Max Aaron needs to switch on a little bit quicker. I don't think he expects him to cross it, which is surprising because they kept crossing it in the second half. Yeah, um, and it's all they've done all day. He knows that. He, he should expect yeah. that, Jacob. He should do better than oh, no. 100%. That, yeah. I think he's been out, just played out of position by the ball. And then he's like, oh, crikey, I need to get back. And just, yeah, he, he, he needs to do a lot better there. He's up. We're his biggest fans, of course. Like, he's best right back in the league by absolutely yeah. mile. And obviously, Norwich's luck is he slides in, tries to block it, and then gets injured. <laughs> mm, yeah so another been, injury exactly and then you just get unlucky you know you think you've just about got rid of it it then deflects goes in i think it's a fair result let's talk about coventry very quickly because they were they were better than i thought they'd be um darbo and o'hare on that right hand side were definitely the danger men um Sorensen had a, a bit of a torrid time dealing with both of them didn't get a lot of help from josh martin but that was definitely where the danger was coming those crosses from the right hand side yeah, they had a chance, didn't they, in that first half where O'Hare's kind of played in Darbo and they thought, right, from then on, we're going to go down that yeah, side and yeah. try and put Sorensen under pressure. Like I said, he didn't have that much <laughs> that much help from Josh, which is a get part of the game he needs to improve because all of our wingers, O'Neill is perfect at that. That's why when he comes back eventually, it'll be great because he tracks back very well. Mm-hmm. Buendia does as well. So, yeah, it's just part of his game. He does need to say improve. Um, 
yeah, that they found a weakness. I think it helps that Tim Krull wasn't in goal. He normally claims those crosses a lot better. I thought Mickey McGovern had a couple of moments where you're like, oh, Mickey, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, um, first half again, where he dropped it. But I, was, oh, yeah. I was panicking. Yeah, yeah, but again, he played fine. It's just disappointing that we couldn't hold out because it would have been a really yeah. nice win. I think it would have given the lads a lot of confidence as well to be like, oh, you know what? We've done bloody well there. But again, mm. a point I would have taken it before kickoff and we're still top of the league. Yeah, really disappointing goal to concede because we just gone five at the back. It's a tap in at the far post, bit of a mix up, really frustrating. But with the squad we have, I still think I'm, I'm still disappointed. I still wanted three points. I still think that we had enough in that side to beat Coventry today. I would have liked to have seen a bit more endeavour in that second half, Jake. You know, get out there, get the second goal, and just kill the game off. And in my opinion, we didn't see a lot of that. I think since Bournemouth. Daniel Farker's substitutions, who have mainly given an impact, have been very good, been very mm-hmm. proactive. I know that a lot of the 23s are obviously not ready, but Omatoye, Dixon Peters, just a little bit of a difference, you know, rawness. I don't think that's Daniel Farker's way. It's not the German way, really, is it? To kind mm-hmm. of go into that emotion. emotion. Obviously, as Brits, English, we're like, yes, give the underdog a go, give the youngster a go, just fly him in, that doesn't matter. But yeah, they're a lot more strategic, aren't they? And you can see that in every way we play, every player picked is for a reason. Mm-hmm. And just unfortunately, it's not until he deserves the opportunity, Daniel Farker gives a player an opportunity or an injury, or another injury, like McClear came on today. It would, I think that would have made a slight difference, but you know, the main difference was commentary made five subs. And, we're... and, that, and the way we just didn't go in for that second goal, it kind of just gave them the kind of, oh, we're just going to keep coming. Belief, yeah. Yeah, yeah the belief, belief that they could just keep coming and not real, really worry in behind, and they get the equaliser. Yeah, for context, Norwich just made the one sub. Zimmerman came on for Josh Martin in the 86th minute. The rest of the... came on as well, didn't he? Uh, sorry, yeah, because of the Max Aaron's injury, um, which let's talk about that a bit. Obviously, it's the 13th, 14th injury, whatever it is now, but who plays right back, Jacob? Do you move Sorensen over and play... Uh... Steepman even or uh, Rob Nese at left back or, or do you put Gibson on the left he's left footed but he's not a wing back uh, what do we do from here uh, <laughs> good I'm question glad I'm, I'm glad I'm not Daniel Farker maybe yeah. you go five at the back but then you risk your three centre backs being injured yeah. because two of them are injury prone one of them hasn't played a full season in two years so that's yeah. risky and then you go play to left wing back maybe Josh Martin right wing back and that's a bit risky or maybe Lucas Rupp if he's back, or Sorensen. Uh, right yeah, Rupp, Rupp could plug the right back hole. To be fair, but it's it's square pegs in round holes. Which, yeah. whilst yeah. unfortunate, you cannot foresee fourteen injuries. You can foresee problems this season with injuries because of the schedule with the stupid Nations League, which some of our players are a part of. Such a stupid competition this time of the year, especially with the games crowd did. I liked it before because, you know what, gives friendlies more of a meaning. Yeah. But in this in this environment, when there's games crammed in every bloody week, like two at least a week, you know, what's the point? Uh, that's why Tim Krull's injured, because he played for bloody Holland. And he's, it's just work overload, isn't it? He played all of last season. And again, just it, a pulled thigh or a thigh injury is because of overwork of load. Um, so that's disappointing. But, yeah, it's, it's now just real tricky. For me, you could have kept a couple of other players back from going out alone. We've said numerous times. Don't know how good Sonani is. Don't really care. Yeah. Would have been better than no, anyone else today. Well, it's not It's not just Sonani, is it, Jacob? Because you've got Sonani out on loan. You've got um, City, McCallum, Tribal even. Like, like there, yeah, is a, there is a... Yeah, Dermage. there is a squad depth problem now. There is a problem now. And that blame does not lay at Daniel Farker's door. He's doing pretty well with what he's been given, actually. To be I top think... of the league, this squad is yeah. a miraculous achievement. There is no... With the injuries, if we have everyone fit, or even, what, 85% of the, the squad mm. fit, if you have five injuries there, Daniel we Farker can deal with that. Yeah. walks this league comfortably, in my opinion, because the league's poor. With the injuries now, struggle for top six. Yeah. All right. Let's put a positive spin on it. We've got real injury problems, real depth problems, but we did have seven academy graduates in the 16 today. All right. It's a bit of a token gesture for the lads on the bench today because we had to fulfill a bench. (laughs) But we have come a long way. I think at the AGM the other night, they said that we've got the 15th most productive academy in the country. And that used to be 70 or 80th place. So we are going in the right direction, Jacob. There's a lot to be excited about. It's just this bloody injury curse that we didn't learn from last season. Hopefully, hopefully as well. Like there's two thousand fans back in from next or for next uh, home game against yes. Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah. That'd be really nice for the fans because all the fans love a, a homegrown lad. 
yeah. and hopefully a, a couple of youngsters come on and that they will feed off that 100%. They will love, even if it's 2,000, they, they, they will just love the adulation. So hopefully that happens. Yeah, it's just, it's just the injuries, mate. And I really struggle to see what happens now in December. I think we struggle. Hopefully Pookie's only out for a couple of games. A lot of the injuries we get, we have a timeline and they seem to go back more back, 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 back in a lot of players' cases, which is worrying. So hopefully Pookie's back. Wendia, wrap him up in whatever you can. Just don't let him <laughs> yeah, out, bubble wrap, out loud. Bubble, everything. Any run, any walk, don't bother. <laughs> Need to be back for Luton. Yeah. Um, it's a patched up squad, but hopefully we in these games, we just kind of rough it out. Try and get your, your odd goal win. It, performances don't matter now. I don't really right. care about performances. If we get a win, we, we're doing really well. I, I think the only problem is, and again, will help with fans, it's an under siege mentality now. We are the underdog in, I'd say, a lot of games now because we don't have a bloody squad. So hopefully the fans help with that, make it a bit more of an intimidating place, especially when Sheffield Wednesday come back on uh, Saturday. Yeah. So how are we going to sum up today? Because it's obviously disappointing, but I think when you consider the squad problems, it's acceptable. But I just would have liked to have seen a bit more endeavour to get that second goal in the second half. That's that's what I'm putting it down to today. You have, you have your own go at it, but... No, I think, I, summed up, I think you summed it up perfectly. If it's a 1-0 win... We, we'll still say the same thing. We, we would have been fortunate to have won yeah. with, with the chances Coventry created. Would have loved to have seen a little bit more endeavour, but still, look at it all in all, still top of the league, still two points clear of third. You march on to Luton and hopefully grab a win there. Let's very, talk, let's very quickly talk about Luton even, because that is going to be a much, what well, I'm expecting it to be a much tougher test than Coventry were today. They got battered today, Luton against Cardiff um, but they are a very good football inside we saw in the 3-1 game where James Collins scored a hat-trick they, they know their roles very well under Nathan Jones they've normally play a diamond so it's going to be very tricky and they're going to be up for that he is yeah. going to be in that dressing room now saying you do not give me that performance that you gave today against Cardiff against Norwich I think it's an, again another struggle if, you, if Pukie's out then again no striker it's a real real tricky game hopefully Timu's back fingers crossed I doubt it to be honest I doubt it Maybe you let Luton have more of the ball and try and counter using Plajeta and Martin's pace, but that that's the risk you take. At the minute, it's I, you don't know, do you? Because you don't you don't know who the frigs are injured or not. With well, when out, when Dia's back, when Dia is at least back, that that that's your saving grace there. You just hope yeah. because he is head and shoulders above any pit, uh, any other player on that pitch on Wednesday. Yeah. Luton will have fans back potentially two thousand, which could play a ha- uh, hand for them. I would again. <laughs> I'd take a draw <laughs> right now. If you if you gave me a draw, I'd bite your hand off because and then you, with the current yeah. squad, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But we'll see. Uh, hopefully, the young lads again potentially get an opportunity and shine. Josh Martin, it for definite. We'll wait and see, mate. Hopefully, Lucas yeah. rips back and I just you need to see a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel, really, don't you? Hopefully, yeah. the the performance wasn't bad today, so hopefully we go in again like that and everyone gives a hundred percent effort. That's all they can do, really. Absolutely, spot on. Okay, let's leave it there. A disappointing, but understandable result, I suppose, is the word for Norwich today, drawing 1-1 with Coventry. Luton away next. Is it Wednesday, Jacob? Yeah, mate, yeah. Wednesday. Okay, we'll be back with you Thursday morning in that case. Until then, like, subscribe, and enjoy the rest of your week.